What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in with Cali. Please like, subscribe if you haven't. So, I mean, you know, I've been hearing some things from some people that's close to me. And um, it's just coming down to these are the same old Clippers. And, you know, this is not the type of uh, things I want to hear, nor do I really believe it. But at the same time, you know, <clears throat> looking at the situation in hindsight, the way it is right now, um, in some ways, they do look like it, you know, because when we look at the Milwaukee Bucks game, there was no Giannis. Now, of course, a lot of people overreacted with that one, the way they deal with the Lakers. And, you know, there's times where teams do get beat when the star, the best player on the team doesn't play because the other team comes in kind of lackadaisical, doesn't really take it as serious as much because, you know, they're not the other team is not at full capacity. And, you know, they they still had Damian Lillard and some good pieces, of course, on the Milwaukee Bucks. But, you know, without Giannis, it does make it a little bit different playing them, especially when the game plan you had was really to stop Giannis, not to just stop Dame Lillard. You know what I'm saying? It was really to stop both of them, you know what I'm saying, with the notion that both of them are going to be playing rather than just one. So it's like when one is a scratch, sometimes it can throw things off a little bit. And um, regardless of that, the Clippers still had, you know, the lead and uh, the Clippers had, you know, really had the game, honestly. But here's another situation where the Clippers failed to, you know, convert in down the stretch of that game and take that game the way they were supposed to by the horns and ride it out and just win the game. But they, they failed to convert, you know, again in the fourth quarter. You know what I'm saying? They let the game slip away from them once again, the same way they did against the Lakers. And now you hear a lot of people talking about, you know, a lot of analysts, you know, bringing up the storyline. Are the Lakers good enough to win the title? and all these things because they came down from a 21-point lead against the Clippers. And, you know, that's that's that. So it's like, you know, every time something happens to the Clippers, it's almost like, you know, the, the world just turns into this, you know, one-sided, you know, motion where it's like, oh, yeah, it's the, end of the, it's the end of the line for the Clippers. Now this team who beat them, now they can win the championship. Whereas most analysts were talking throughout the season that the Lakers didn't have a chance because of the up and down season that they had. And I really still think it's going to be the same thing, up and down roller coaster. And it's like when you're that type of team, you're that way throughout. You're not consistent in which they're not. And, you know, with the Bucks game, it was the same thing, you know, for the Clippers, you know, they, they, they failed to, you know, capture the game the way it was supposed to. They let one slip by them. Um, PG and James Harden had great games. Both of them had 29 points. Kawhi didn't have such a great game. Uh, he shot like five or 16 or something like that. And only had about 16 points, but you know, a lot of people might say things about that as well in that Bucks game. But you got to look at how many games have Kawhi been consistent when there was no Paul George helping him, when there was no James Harden putting up numbers to consistently, you know, uh, help him with the scoring load. And that's the thing, you know, you got to have consistency also from those guys. It can't just be, you know, some nights they show up and some nights they don't. And that's what scares me about the Clippers more than even what I've been seeing about them, you know, um, failing to sustain leads and you know keeping riding these games out that, that's something they did a few years ago as well the waning parts of the game they would just you know fall apart and that's what they did you know maybe a few years ago right after the bubble or something like that so they're kind of playing within that same type of you know realm the way they did then but I mean what really scares them scares me about them the most I would say is the James Harden and Paul George effect, because like I said, you know, how many I, I, I could tell you, I can't tell you how many games I looked at the last several weeks. I mean, even before the all star break where Paul George is five for 16 himself and, you know, seven for 21 or, or six for 19. And the same thing with James Harden. I mean, the other night against the Timberwolves, James Harden was 0 for 10 from the field. He did contribute with 10 assists. And I'm glad he did, because I mean, if he didn't do that, I mean, what would have been the point of him being out there honestly if we're being honest with each other so and then Paul George had another one of those five or 17 nights as well so it's like when you played a better competition you've got to be able to show up and having Kawhi out there putting up big numbers most nights and it looks like he's out there on an island by himself where he's supposed to have three top players in the league you know what I'm saying at least top 10 top 15 players in the league in most people's eyes or a lot of people's eyes, you got to find a way to be more consistent. I'm, and I'm, and that's my thing. If they're more consistent offensively, 
they're not losing none of these games. They're just not. Like, I mean, of course, Paul George didn't play the game with the Lakers, but I mean, even still, you know, other games that I've seen where they just need more consistency from their star power. It can't just be Kawhi dropping like 30 plus points. And then you'll look at a stat line where James Harden have 15 and Paul George have about, you know, 15. And it's like, oh, okay, well, where's other star power? Because they're definitely taking the shots. It's not like they're not putting up shots. Every time Paul George catches it, you know he's like not shy he's taking the shot he's pulling the trigger it's not like he's not getting up enough shots for him to get into a rhythm I can see if he's only getting like eight shots or 10 shots a game and he got to do with what he got but no Paul George is putting up 16 plus shots a game you know at one time he was putting up more shots a game than Kawhi Leonard was and Kawhi was still right there in the scoring column with uh, Paul George, putting up less shots because that's just how efficient Kawhi is. He doesn't waste anything, and that's the and that's the thing. You know, if you got a guy that efficient, that means you don't even have to be that efficient yourself. All you got to do is be average or manageable instead of going, you know, a lot of games where I've seen, you know, uh, PG and maybe even uh, James Harden sometime. Now, James Harden has played a little bit better in, in instances, I think, some, but, you know, hit or miss there but I mean when I look at Paul George it's like you know instead of going five for 17 I mean if you can just go I'd say you know eight for 17 or eight for 18 or something like that just make a few more field goals to kind of widen that gap in the scoring margin it can make all the world difference you see what I'm saying and like I said with all the star power on the floor there's no reason why the Clippers can't be more aggressive in going to the paint and this the, 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 the biggest problem with the Clippers the reason why they're having trouble finishing out games and you see the 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 Laker collapse and the the Bucks collapse and things like that. Hopefully they don't have any more. But the biggest problem is they just they get jump shooting happy because they got so much scoring from everywhere. They think they could just outshoot everybody, but they're forgetting the one thing that's that's going to help them win if they don't get it in their brain. They have to be more aggressive going to the basket and putting teams in foul trouble, getting to the getting to the free throw line, and you know they have to convert their free throws. In that Bucks game, uh, I think Paul George missed like four or five free throws I mean I'm not saying that could have determined the game but it might could have you know I think James Harden missed a few and um some key crucial ones and it's like you know you got to find a way to you know come through in these type situations you know because it can't always be Kawhi just saving the day playing defense dropping the most points it can't just always be him doing that and if he is going to do that that's fine that's Kawhi Leonard but that means you still should be able to contribute to a high level because you're a star player too just the same way he is and I really also think you know underratedly they're, they miss Russell Westbrook. They miss Russ because Russ gives them that extra energy. He gives them that extra dog on the court, and he's an extra playmaker. Russ doesn't score the way he used to. He does at times, but he's really he, he's really an extra playmaker that they have where they can push the ball, get more in transition, get extra uh, easier points that way. And, you know, and the way he cuts to the basket, he can get his own shot pretty much any time he wants to, and it breaks the defense down a lot more. So Russ not being there definitely – you know, hurts their calls a little bit as well. So, but um, even without Russell Westbrook, you still got three star players. You know, you got to find a way to close games and you got to find a way to be more aggressive. I want to see more aggression from this team. And even from Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi, you know, sometimes, Kawhi can get a little trigger happy with a jumper, but I ain't really worried about him because I know Kawhi is the most consistent. He's just a consistent person all the way around. But I mean, even at times, I do want him to be a little bit more aggressive going to the basket. Not much more, but I mean, just a little bit more aggressive. And I know one thing about Kawhi, I don't really have to question him too much. His aggression meter turns up when the playoff time comes, so I ain't really got to worry about him. But really, when I speak about being more aggressive, I want Kawhi, I want PG, and I want James Harden to be more aggressive going to the basket drawing more fouls, stop trying to, you know, um, get fouled from the three-point line and, you know, flop and get a four-point play or, you know, stop just coming off screens, catching, shooting, and throwing it up or, you know, go to the basket. Paul George is 6'7". He, is a, he has a long wingspan. He can get to the rim and cause a lot of trouble against teams, put teams on their heels. All of them can. James Harden got a good enough handle to still get to the rim the way he once could. Not, not as good as he once could, but he still can get 
get to the rim good enough to put teams on their heels defensively. So now the other team has to re-strategize their thoughts to try to figure out how to attack the Clippers. And that's what's going to make the Clippers dangerous. Attack the basket, be more aggressive on that end instead of just always relying on that jumper. Because the jump shots, if you live by it, you die by it. When they fall in, you're good. When they're not, now you're looking stuck. And that's not something the Clippers want to have because now that could be another situation of what happened in the bubble. Or you could find yourself knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. And I don't think the Clippers definitely want that. It's especially with all the hype around them once again and with all the star power that they have on this team there's no reason why if healthy they should not be you know somewhere near or in the NBA finals so I mean but they're not going to be there if they keep playing this style of basketball where they think they can just outshoot everybody and this small ball thing that they have going on I mean I understand that that's what Ty Lue really wants, but I really think possibly they might, they might have shut out. They might have should have went out and got another big man, honestly, because even their big men, you know, what I'm saying I like Daniel Tice, I like Plumlee, and I like you know uh, the way they play, and you know a little bit of Zubac, but they need a little bit more of a presence in the paint. And I understand these guys can be that, but they have to start being it. You know, what I'm saying it can't just be hit or miss. Some games they get uh, double digit rebounds, and then some games they get single digit rebounds. They need more consistency. They need more bangers. They need more aggression all the way around as a team, as a unit, because if they don't, I'm telling you, it's going to be a very, very sad day in Clipperland because when the playoffs come, you can't just expect Kawhi to do every single thing. That's the reason why Kawhi has got hurt the last few years, because he has to do every single thing, because if you remember in the bubble, he had to do all the scoring and, you know, Paul George didn't show up and it's like everybody blamed it on Kawhi, of course, because he's the best player on the team. But I mean, damn, he he, he flamed out. Out. He flamed out because he was doing everything and all the other players on the Clippers were just there showing they won't showing up and this is and this can't be the same thing happening this time. You got too much star power on this team. And we don't need to see another James Harden flame out ever again, or otherwise he's going to be out the NBA, I believe. And, you know, Paul George can't flame out. I mean, this, you, you got to be more consistent. You got to be more, you don't have to be as consistent as Kawhi, but you got to give Kawhi the help that he needs. If they give Kawhi, I mean, just hypothetically, if Paul George and James Harden can average 19 points a game, Every single game, like 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 every single time, like consistently, consistently 19 between the 19 and 22 point range. If they're both within that area right there every single night with Kawhi being as consistent as he is, they wouldn't they, they would be undefeated at the all star break or. Well, well, I can't say that because Paul George, you know, was hurt or whatever. But I'm just saying hypothetically. If they're if they're all there and healthy, they be they would be on the roll kind of like they were before the All Star break. They would be rolling right now because the consistency would be there. Because Kawhi is going to be consistent, but he needs guys around him to play their role as well. That's how you win a championship. It can't just be you know hit or miss. Oh well, Paul George coming the game, he might score sixteen, he might score twenty three, or James Harden might have ten assists, or he might go zero for ten from three. That that those type things can't happen if you want to win championships i'm telling you i know for a fact i've been watching basketball long enough to know you need more consistency whatever you get from a player it needs to be right around that same mark pretty much every time i mean the only the most consistent player probably on the clippers besides you know um Kawhi leonard you can throw Russ in there because, you know, Russ, you know, he plays, you know, he doesn't go for stats anymore. He's pretty much consistent at what he does whenever he comes in. But Norman Powell's the only other one. I mean, and that's not good. I mean, Norman Powell comes off the bench. He's not a starter. So it's like if your only other consistent real player is a, a bench player of, amongst the starters, that is a problem. So it's like, you know, they have to really get things together and really figure things out because I'm telling you, the way they look right now, I, they don't look like a championship team to me, not at the not at the current moment, the way they look as we speak. Now, of course, I understand it's still the season. I'm not overreacting and neither should you. But at the same time, weary, that's OK to be weary about what you're seeing right now, because this is what this is when, this is what is being put on display. And this is what we're going by. So it's like they need to pick it up. They need to get more consistent. They need to be more aggressive on both ends of the floor, offense and defense. Start scrapping, start jumping out of bounds for rebounds, start diving for loose balls, you know, start getting a little bit more, you know, in that mode. Because I'm telling you, like the playoffs is basically almost like right here. And, you know, of course, 
you want to be healthy. You want to you want to have all that, but you also want to be at the best seed you can. Because if you have to go in the first round and play a team that's going to take you seven games, now you're taking more wind out your system going to the second round, the third round, and then possibly make it to the finals. And you know the more fatigue sets in the more possibility of injuries to concur. So it's like, you know, the Clippers got to be wary about all these things and they got to really start understanding, hey, you know, we got to go for it all. It's all or nothing this year. It's no excuses. It's no anything. All or nothing. And that's the way it has to be.